Uh, Jonathan, we can hear Mission Control there saying this has touched down. Let's have a little listen to that. Unofficial touchdown time, 8.52 a.m. Mountain. And the team can now breathe an immense sigh of relief. We now have the sample return capsule, the SRC, containing pieces of the asteroid venue. You see the reaction there just moments ago as they got that sample back on the ground. Jonathan, I don't know if you heard that. Jonathan Amos, our science correspondent in Utah for us. We're seeing pictures on the screen of uh, people uh, cheering and clapping. We heard the official announcement there from Mission Control that the SRC, the sample return capsule, officially landed at 8.52 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, and Jonathan, this is a long-running operation. There must be scientists who've been working on this for their entire careers. Yeah, I'll get to that in just a second. That's slightly earlier than we were expecting, actually. We didn't expect it to come down till 55 uh, minutes uh, past the hour, five minutes to the top of the hour. So it's touched the surface of planet Earth a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, but the important thing is that it looks in good shape. That parachute uh, we saw uh, seemed to be well open and it gently floated down. It actually touched the surface of the ground probably at around about 10 miles an hour, something like that, about 17 or 18 kilometers an hour. So what's that? I think that's sprinting pace, uh, isn't it? Yeah, to go to your question about how long some people have, have worked on this. Well, the mission was launched seven years ago. Um, the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft left Earth back then, 2016. Uh, it would have taken them about five, six years, I guess, to, uh, to build the spacecraft, to get all the systems ready. But then the scientists involved, you know, would have been sort of devising the mission, planning the mission, um, you know, for a, a good 10 years uh, before that. I think speaking to the principal investigator, uh, Don, uh, Dante Loretta, um, a couple of days ago, I think, he, I think he's been working on it for nearly 20 years. I saw him actually, gave me a thumbs up just as he boarded the helicopters uh, to go out to the recovery position. Um, you know, what a moment for him, all of that planning to see it all the way through and now to be looking at that capsule with those precious samples on board lying on the floor of the Utah desert. He must be well chuffed and, and of course for him actually it probably only really starts now, right? Because they've got to get that capsule back, they're going to bring it to back behind me, get in a clean room and then get ready to start analysing the samples. Well Jonathan, tell us a bit more about that, this clean room that you talk about that. What is that? Why is that so important? But listen, if you think there's chemistry in, the, in these samples, which can tell you about the, the formation of life, the creation of life on Earth billions of years ago, the last thing you need when you look at those samples is to have earthly contamination in there, you know, bacteria. Even the oxygen in, in Earth's atmosphere, it, if it gets at these samples, it will start to oxidize compounds. You will change their composition. So you won't be looking at pristine samples. So that capsule, when they get it underneath a helicopter and bring it behind me here at the Dugway military base, they're going to take it into a temporary clean room. They'll take the, uh, the heat shield off, uh, you know, that's had that really violent re-entry, the back shell, the, the top half, if you like, of the capsule, and within that then there will be an inner canister that is sealed and the sample will be in there. And they want to get that canister in a box and purge it with nitrogen. Nitrogen won't react with anything, it'll stop the oxygen getting in and that sealed box then will go to the Johnson Space Center. That's where NASA keeps all of its extraterrestrial materials. You know, those moon rocks that I was talking about, they're kept at the Johnson Space Center. And they have built a dedicated clean room down at Johnson. Uh, the, the canister will go in there and it will be opened in the next uh, couple of weeks. They'll you know, unscrew all of the bolts and have a look to see how much sample that they have in there. They think they've got about 250 grams, which the, the director of, uh, of planetary science um, at NASA explained to me was the weight of an adult hamster. Um, I'm not sure how much a hamster weighs, but you get the picture. It sounds like not very much, right? 250 grams. The Apollo astronauts brought back 380 kilos uh, from uh, the surface of the moon. 250 grams. It's actually ample, more than enough to do the types of tests that they want to do on it. You know, they will be looking almost at single atoms within these, uh, within these samples to learn about what the early solar system was like four and a half billion years ago. But they need to do it 
in a clean environment, clean surroundings. Sterility is everything here, otherwise you're going to bias your results.